geologists tell us about the arch rock. This island was once submerged as the waters receded. The wave action against the soft limestone center of that rock began to wash it out. Actually created a cave at first, and the backside of the cave collapsed. That left us with the arch rock. Arch rock stands 150 feet above Lake Hearn. It's 50 feet across. Now, Native Americans have a legend on the arch rock. It begins with a maiden over on the mainland. She's of the age to be married. Got a lot of guys that want to take her hand in marriage, but she's not paying attention to any of them. Finally, one night her father asked her what the problem was. These were good-looking guys, strong, good hunters, good providers, yet she paid them no attention. Why is that? Well, she didn't want to tell him because she knew he'd be angry. But under the threat of a beating, she finally confessed that late one night, while out gathering wild rice, she looked to the Milky Way and there appeared a spirit brave. She said that spirit brave was very handsome. He had beautiful white robes on, dazzling beadwork, intricate embroidery. She fell in love with him and he was her. Well, she was right. Dad didn't want nothing to do with his daughter marrying his spirit when all these live guys down here wanted to marry her. So he put her in his canoe. He brought her over here to the island. He tied her to the top of that rock. He said, you're not coming down. He had changed your mind. Well, she cried, she cried, and she cried, and her tears washed a hole in the rock. Now, her spirit brave looked down from the Milky Way. He seen that as an opening into her world. He swept through it, untied her, gathered her up in his arms, back to the arch they went, back to the Milky Way, where they lived happily ever after. That's a nice legend. That's my favorite one. That is an awe legend. Could I get some awes? Aww. Thank you. <laughs> Wrapping up the Native American legends, as we know the Great Spirit lives here, there comes a time when he wants all of his children to come and share the island with him. So it said that he sent out an invitation to every Indian nation on earth. He sent it out with the birds, and he gave the birds very clear instructions to deliver. You will tell my children... They'll approach this island only from the eastern shore, that's where we're at, and they'll enter my home only under the Great Arch. So according to legend, the native would land their canoes down there, they would give lay gifts to the Great Spirit at the base of the arch rock, and then come onto the island. Long, proud history of the 500 year-round residents today. They say 50% are Native American, and about 30% are French, uh, French Canadian ancestry. Well, between here and the fort, we're going to talk about the horses a little bit, third day on the island, talk about the drivers, give you an idea how this all comes together. First, a little demo of the horses. Now, you notice I have a whip on board. You actually seen me use that. That was the first time this year I've used a whip. Now, it's getting warmer out, and Maurice and Chuck have to learn to keep up with Mark. Um, and they know, generally speaking, I don't use a whip. And they're playing that to their uh, benefit right now. They won't respond to me. So I am going to start, uh, as we call it, lighting them up every now and then. So they get a little confused knowing that they have to pay attention back here. Typically, I don't need a whip. I tell you why I carry it. Between May 1st and June 15th of every year, we do 15 or 20 to 25,000 elementary school kids. And I never leave home without the whip. <laughs> Horses, I don't use it that often. If I needed these guys to get moving, Martin's my lead horse. I just simply got to talk to him. I'll call out his name. He'll turn his ears back at me. I'll tell him to get, and he's going to get. He's already looking and listening. Yep, you hear your name, Martin? Martin, get. Simple as that. No weapon necessary. Now you'll see me using a line slap occasionally. Martin sets the pace. Maurice and Chuck don't always agree with him. They get a little behind. So I'll use a line slap. You can see Martin's or Maurice's behind. I just give him a little track. He moves up. So snap. That snap in the line over the leather makes that snapping sound. They'll get where they should be. Very important to have them pulling equally in this weather. It's getting warmer. Um, Martin likes to do all the work himself. And uh, they let a rookie driver, and they have a couple times drive him. Martin will come in with just uh, froth all over He'll try and do the whole load. So it's very important to keep these other guys working with him. If I needed to get Martin going again, I'm talking to you. I can't be talking to Martin at the same time. I'll just, again, take the drive line, drape it over his rump. He gets the message. They get going. So. Not a lot of 
anywhere from eight to 10,000 pounds of manure every day. It's all taken to the center of the island where it's composted. About a year later, when it's ready, it's loaded on the large roll-off containers and sold off the island. Now, does your mom grow flowers? Yeah? Kids, parents grow flowers? That's the best fertilizer you can get, road apples. There ain't nothing like it. So if you got a little room in your backpack, you kids can pick up all you want. It's free. Yeah. But you got to remember now, my wife's a master gardener, and she says, make sure I warn you. It's called green manure, hot manure, when it comes right out of the horse, because it's got an acid in it that'll actually kill a flower. You don't want to do that, do you? No. So what you do when you get home, you take those road apples and you space them out across all the windowsills in the house, leave them for about a year. Okay? They'll be ready to go. Good job, buddy. No thanks needed, parents. Once we get the barns cleaned out, we clean the horses, get them harnessed, and we're ready to do chores. These guys have done four chores. This is our fourth. I suppose we could actually do one more today, and that'll be about it for the day. We got out here at 8.30. Probably be back in by 4.30. Uh, long day, but a lot of waiting up on the hill. Now, during the summer, they're going to do four or five tours, and they're going to have that done by 2 o'clock. And then I'm going to take them back to the barn. I pick up a new team for the afternoon. That way, none of these horses work all day in the heat. They only work half day. Work a half a day, they get a day uh, Work a half a day, then they work six days, they get a day off. 